on my property. You didn't win shit in my yard. Wait, wait, wait. I, all of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. All right, everybody. So we are back here at Jake's Bait and Tackle. We are doing the 10-year anniversary of Jake's. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming here all day long. Please stop on by if you want to say hi, if you got some questions to ask. We have vendors here. We have food. We have everything. And we're going to have guests all day. Let's see. I got one question here. Uh, let's see. Flathead. Oh, boy. Here we go. Jeff um, Pirin, Perini. Uh, usually my wife is the one that actually is really good with the names and stuff. I am not one of those people. Let me just tell you that. So I deeply apologize, sir, if I butchered your name. Uh, he asks a question. What do you think should be considered the top predator in the upper Potomac musky or flathead? Now, so he's saying, what do I think should be considered the top predator musky or flathead? Interesting. Um, what is the top predator? Um, let's go there. So the top predator right now, hands down, is probably the flathead catfish. It is a voracious eater. It multiplies a lot faster. It's a really good predator. I mean, bottom line, like, like catfish are extremely good at what they do. They eat anything or they eat really indiscriminately. They grow big. And that is why in any river system they get put into, they dominate because they're, they're a fantastic predator. Um, it's no different than maybe like a crocodile or a shark. It's something that really hasn't evolved over the last, what, million years. Um, they, it, they are really, really good at what they do. And that's why they haven't really adjusted like over the millennia. And if you look at a uh, catfish that I think really looks like a flathead, and you know, let me get this up for you. I have no idea. And maybe I got to ask like a, a Dave Sikorsky a, a jason halliker but i think the flathead really reminds me of like the wells catfish flathead catfish let me bring this up here for you guys so i'm going to share my screen right now we have the flathead catfish right here um and then if you really look at like how this this the the mouth is shaped on this thing let me get a good picture of this thing here and again this is just uh, you, i'm not a scientist i'm not a, a professional when it comes to this thing here but this right here is the flathead catfish and then when you look at the wells catfish this is the picture of the well this is a european catfish right here it'll grow over i think it's like six feet long it's insane and but it dominates all the fisheries in in europe because it's a really good predator its mouth is based on hunting and if you ever watch stuff whether it's like river monsters um any nat geo special that actually has these catfish on there you can tell that their feeding style is actually to hunt and they're very very good at that and when you look at like how this mouth is shaped it's a lot like the flathead it is a it is a predator first, not a scavenger. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Um, uh, some good individuals. I just did a podcast episode with an avid catfish angler, um, and then I also did a podcast episode with um, the the head of the Maryland uh, DNR as well, talking about them. But again, if anyone would like to come on the show and talk about the catfish more, I am I would love to have you on, and we can actually talk about that further since I haven't targeted catfish specifically. But yeah, I mean they're here to stay in the river. Unless you're gonna like poison the river, I don't see a way to get them out just like the snakehead so whether you're for them or against them they're just here to stay and you gotta and you gotta just gotta just roll with the punches um and we do have a we do have another guest that has just arrived let's get him on here boom and so joining me now is since jared didn't prep me on that sorry bud i'm uh joshua gray with northern virginia kayak bass anglers wow they they, they made you come out here because he's afraid to come on i know he was busy but yeah <laughs> it's good to see you thank you thanks for having me so uh what's been going on with the kayak world i know guys i actually fished with these guys uh the first two events then i cast happened and sadly i had to miss the the first tournament of the year and so i had to make the battle of, of like five lakes but our plane wouldn't get back in time for me to fish that so it screwed me because like it would have worked out great because I would be able to fish Lake Frederick, which it got moved to, which is awesome. Right. But uh, first off, before we talk about the organization, mm -hmm. like, I, I want to talk about, like, honestly, what got you into kayak fishing? Um, so I've always been a fly fisherman pretty much my whole life. And I started watching some YouTube videos of guys like Greg Blanchard, Chad Hoover. They were mm -hmm. bass fishing from a kayak. And I was like, that is really, really cool. Um, so I kind of got into the game. I, I bought a Vibe kayak. I started paddling around and trying to fish 
And um, then I found this organization called NVKBA. I was like, oh, what is that? And um, I, the community was like, I don't know, like 100 plus guys. And they were pretty active. And I found out that they had trail stops in the area. And um, they had a spot in Lake Anna. I was like, I've never mm. fished Lake Anna before. So Lake Anna was trail stop number two this year. Um, so I hopped in like literally like three days before the tournament. Right. And I drug my family down there and I jumped in the water with three or four other guys and they were super cool. Um, giving me little pointers cause I had never fished that body of water before. Um, went out, had the time of my life catching just three fish for that tournament. Like I didn't even catch the limit, but it was awesome. Um, so then we went to the next trail stop and then the next trail stop. And by the time the season was over, it was like, man, Kayak bass fishing is like a totally different animal. It's really addicting. And then be beforehand, did you ever fish boat tournaments or anything like this? Or this is your first experience? No, this is my first it? experience with it. And I think that's the best way to go about it. So guys, guys, like, so I did fish, I fished out of a boat really first. Um, and there was a huge learning curve for me specifically going from boat to kayak. And with, with everyone that I've interviewed, um, and if you guys want to go back on the channel, I've tried to interview every single winner or, or anyone from the organization that wants to come on because it's such a great organization that you do have to strategize differently in a kayak versus a boat. And I think it's a great advantage if you've just been in a kayak because you don't have to have that brain, that, that different thinking that, you know, I was used to like having a 250 in the back. And so I'm going to, I'm going to hit all of Lake Anna. Right. No way in hell you're going to do that. You got to think differently there. And yeah. specifically, like I want to talk about that Lake Anna event because that, that shit was hard. Yeah. I was there for that one and it was intensely hard. What was your thoughts going? Was it just more of like your thoughts going into it of like, I'm just here to have fun or did you have like an idea of what you were trying to do? No, I wanted to win, man. Like hundred percent. I was like, this is my first tournament. I want to win this tournament. Um, and I must've studied that Lake nonstop for the three days prior to me getting on that body of water. And I knew about the warm side and the cold side. I knew everybody would be going to the warm side and everybody kept talking about the warm side. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the middle of the Lake. Um, like right where the tow boats are. Mm -hmm. And I went up the left side and went north onto the cold side of the lake and i figured that there would be less pressure on the north side um and i'd still be getting maybe a little bit of the warm water um because i'm still kind of in the middle of the lake and as i went up the left side kind of followed my game plan my game plan was you know once i get up to a point where the lake started to wye off on the north side i would turn around and, and work that side back down That's really good i ended up crossing the lake at like 11 o'clock that morning, which was a horrible idea because there were power boats just blasting by me, oh man. My God. And I was paddling as fast as I could across that water. Um, and then I ended up getting skunked on the other side. I caught three on the left side, but I didn't catch anything on the other side. It was so. hard. I God, I don't know. I, I launched up like where that road crosses. Let me find that actually on, on Navionics. Because like I crossed up above. Um, I launched from the top and just started fishing that area. You guys, and bear with me while I, while I get Navionics up. Um, <laughs> And I, I, I struggled once the power boats came out, mm -hmm. especially in that kayak. It was absolutely insane how, how much that wash affects you in a kayak. Right. Yeah, absolutely. What bait did you use when I get this up here? Um, I was flipping a blue and black jig most of the tournament. A um, little bit of Cinco action. Um, but this is actually the first year that I really got into bass fishing as a whole. So my knowledge on selection was pretty limited as far as what lures i should have been using on that lake um but i've got some uh, buddies that are hardcore bass anglers and before i got on the water they said black and blue is always true so it's what it's pretty much what i fished it, with the, the whole tournament man it, 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 pre it pretty much is and that way we can get it all get it all set up here situated so yeah so what i what i did is where is it so like right there where that where it wise off right right uh Ooh, down to the right here. a little bit like right in that area is about where i stopped um the amount of of boat traffic and yeah, stuff boat traffic and just the the distance that i had traveled because i was thinking you know i've watched these guys cover all kinds of bodies of water on boats mm -hmm. i didn't really know what it was going to take to make a run in a kayak yeah it's totally different when you don't have any kind of are you, are you just pedaling paddling what, what are you doing i'm pedaling now but i was paddling on that tournament. you were holy shit. after that <laughs> tournament i went out and i completely changed my setup i sold my kayak <laughs> and i went and i got a pedal drive so i could move at least a couple miles an hour faster to make better runs on on future uh, tournaments i mean god love the people um <laughs> His name slips my mind, but he just won the uh, the Potomac River one, and he said about like he, he all he does is paddle. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, God bless you. But I would want some other form of, right. of whether it's paddle or it's pedaling or like an electric motor. Yeah. Because the, the fact of just getting out there and just not having the, the, the power. That's yeah. a thing, too. Um, I actually so I started leaving right now that I actually got my bearings. So I think it's right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is where I was. And I moved up because I just wanted a little bit more stained water. And it was hard. It was really, really frustrating that day to get the bites. I really were able to find them in a couple of areas because I was keen in on, on bluegill beds. Were, were you looking for like the blueback herring, the shad bite? Like what were you specifically keying in on with that jig? Um, so at that point, I had no electronics on my kayak at all. Um, I was just going off of knowledge that fish hang around points. Mm-hmm. So I was just fishing some of the points coming into those different inlets. Um, and that's pretty much, that's where I caught all three of my fish was off some of the points going into some of those little inlets where people have docks and whatnot. And there was a guy that was flipping dock after dock after dock. And I never saw him pulling anything up. So I was like, I don't really think anything shallow right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I did cross, I ended up seeing, I've never seen so many bluegill beds in my life. It was insane. And I mean, me just getting into bass fishing, I'm like, yeah, what is that? And I'm like, Oh, those are bluegill beds. And I'm talking like, there's must have been a hundred of them in one little cove. And I was like, man, if I'd have been here, you know, a week earlier, I bet there were bass all over this area. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I just kept flipping that blue and black jig and just hoping the good Lord would give me a fish. But <laughs> I mean, I only got the three. And then when I, cro- when I went outside of my game plan, which is something that I've now understand going into a kayak tournament, if you make a game plan, stick with it. Yeah. Like you can, you can call an audible every now and again, but like do your research, plan your way out, and just execute. Well, what was your setup for that rig for the black and blue jig? What were you using? Um, I think I have. I think I still have it. It's a Black Max. Black Max. And that was like the first bait caster that I had ever had. All right. And so, like throughout the rest of the season, I've kind of upgraded a little bit. I've now got an obsession with thirteen fishing rods. Um, it's a really those, good brand. Those guys. things are stout. Uh, I I love my thirteen fishing rods. Um. Got into a little bit of the swim bait scene, um, chucking anything from four to six ounce swim baits. Um, haven't caught on any anything on any of them yet, but it's kind of addicting to like watch the followers that you get oh off God. of an yeah. eight inch Huddleston is like. I, I know hey. why people like musky fishing now <laughs> after doing after really getting into that because when you actually see one of these things actually just shark it and all of a sudden like your heart stops yeah um, but my god for a tournament like strategy I don't know how some of those pros do it because I, I don't think I could just throw that for like ten hours straight no and actually definitely like, not keep my soul I, I've noticed that a, a lot more boat guys will throw the big swim baits versus the kayak guys but that's another thing is a lot of the waters that we fish in our club Northern Virginia area specific. Um, I don't see anybody chucking big baits. Mm-hmm. So like towards the end of the season, I was like, you know, no one's chucking anything longer than three inches out here. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to give my shot at big swim baits towards the end of the season. And, and I mean, next year I'm hoping that that's going to be a, a very deep part of my game is big swim bait stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, but just the whole season has been awesome, man. Like everybody in the clubs, Super cool, super laid back. Everybody's just there to have fun. And I mean, you got some serious hammers in our club. Oh my god, yeah. Like, and I definitely need to get up with some of these guys to see see what they're doing. You know, yeah, it, it's a really really good club, guys. It's it's growing at, like at a crazy rate. I'm gonna try to get Mike on um, at some point this week to talk a little bit more about the whole like Frederick change. Uh, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that in like a quick second here. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to give like a quick little rundown, how'd the rest of your season go? Um, went all right. Um. Let's see, we went Lake Anna, then we went to Potomac, Shenandoah, um, then we did Battle of the Five Lakes. Um, Shenandoah didn't really produce for me very well. Did you fish Shenandoah? I out did. Of the three? Okay. I did. Um, I want to say I dropped in somewhere near Low Water Bridge. Okay. Um, and I had done that float like two weeks prior as a pre fish with one of the other guys in the club. And the water level was super low that day that, that we were on the water for the tournament itself. Um, I, at that point, I I caught the biggest smallmouth bass I'd ever had in my life, um, and I think it was 16 inches, I believe. And then we were looking at the the chaos app, and like people are chucking up 20s, 21s, 22s. We're like, man, we picked the wrong section to fish, man. <laughs> um, I I want to say a couple of different guys. I mean, the big fish for that tournament, I want to say, it was like 21, 22. 
Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, guys, Lee Wells won that one. I remember that yeah. name for some reason. I was blanking on who, who won the last one uh, on the Potomac. But, yeah, I mean, he smoked him, and he was fishing the Shenandoah River. I fished the Shenandoah River, too. The section I was fishing, it it just it was dead nuts. The wind, when it started blowing, mm-hmm. it was like the tidal Potomac. It yeah. was like, holy crap. And I cramped. And guys, you got to get in shape. You're going to use a pedal kayak because I had my groin, my crotch cramped. It was bad. <laughs> I almost thought I was going to drown because of how hard I was pedaling to just keep my kayak in place. Cause like I was afraid to use an anchor where if I didn't, if I hooked that anchor wrong, I would, I'd be flipping. Oh but, man. Um, I, uh, I grabbed a throw anchor from a buddy of mine before that tournament and I had got hit. So I was casting behind me cause the hit came at like a 90 to the kayak. So I was casting behind me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get too far away from this fish. Like I need my second one. Now mm-hmm. I threw that drag anchor and the anchor had gone, <laughs> like off to the left of my kayak a little bit. So I kind of like scooted myself over and he got hooked on something and I was standing up and I mean, I went, I almost got thrown out of the kayak in like five feet of water. Um, So that was a, that was a learning curve for me. Like, and I had it tied off on the, the dead, dead nut center of my kayak i'll never do that again I, it's it was like scary, man. <laughs> and that was the thing too like with um if you guys are going to use an anchor um jeff little talks about this we're gonna have him hopefully on the show a little bit uh a little bit later carry a knife with you something across your chest or something because if you're using that anchor and it hooks wrong you know you could be in a world of hurt real quick if you can't get get rid of it yeah you know absolutely in a, in a hurry and all your gears going too yeah you, you in the gear yeah straight to the bottom <laughs> and then yeah strap down your rods too i learned that the wrong way when i lost 600 dollars worth of tackle make sure you hook your rods to something uh that way you don't have an incident and you're gonna be really crying when you right. get home yep. um so then did you qualify for the for the championship i did so yep. you want um, you want to talk a little bit about that because there's a little not <clears throat> controversy but it's an interesting little little twist it definitely is um i know originally i believe we were supposed to go to the res and fish the res but there's something going on so they're like hey we're gonna find another body of water uh, a lot of people were actually in vote for going back to Lake Anna, which mm-hmm. was totally fine with me. Like yeah. I have redemption on that, on that lake. I'd love that. Um, and then when they said that they were going to Lake Frederick, which I live five minutes from, and that's like my test lure lake, as I call it. If I can catch a fish on Lake Frederick with yeah. a lure, I can catch a fish anywhere with that lure, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think most guys are kind of like defeated in the fact that that is a very hard lake to fish. Um, and I actually watched the the podcast that you guys had on it, um, what last week I believe, mm-hmm. um, the the lake that men fear, um, which is pretty accurate, <laughs> it, man. It, it like, is. It, it, I think it's hard. awesome because being that it is hard, it really takes you to a different skill level. Oh yeah, and you've got to have the patience to to really understand what they're honing in on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go out there with a senko all day and catch anything that's six to seven inches oh it's a dink you can yeah, guys it's a so dink when we say and i don't think i brought this up in the podcast when we say it's hard it's it's, it's hard to catch a a, a squirrel bass or a live well keeper size bass mm-hmm. they're in there oh, yeah. you can catch a ton of dinks oh yeah like that's not the problem yeah yeah catching a decent one phew, that's that's tough yeah i mean i i want to say that uh the department they did like their electro fishing earlier this year and some of the pictures of fish that they had found I'm like what mm-hmm. that's in that lake like yeah. no way and i i think it's fantastic that it's going to be at lake frederick it's going to bring guys to a different level of fishing and and-, yeah. and it opens up talking so i got to talk to mike um a little bit after the announcement was made and what i like about it is since it since the so lake frederick is owned by the department of, of virginia the department of wildlife resources and so this opens up the ability to have so many more lakes available to use mm-hmm. and i also told him like you know what's so cool it's like it, the old school way when the first Bassmaster Classic was announced, they put everybody on a plane and then they said, you can open up your envelope to know where we're going. I do like that you don't know for the championship where you're going to go. Right. And so whether it's Lake Frederick again, I kind of think this was a happy accident of like, I think two to three weeks out, they just make the announcement. Like yeah. That's kind of cool because yeah. you can't prep then mentally for it. Right. Um, and I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a cool tournament. I personally, guys, I've always loved, the tough tournaments for championships versus the slugfest. So like when um, the Bassmasters went to Pittsburgh, the three rivers, I think like eight pounds won it one day and they had to figure out how to catch them there. That's cool to me um, for some kind of championship because it shows off. You're right. Like the best of the best will rise through it. Right. Um, with that said, inch wise, what, what do you think is actually going to like win it there? Like what, what do you think it's going to take? 
24 inches. Holy shit. <laughs> that That's what I'm calling, man. 24 <laughs> inches is going to win that tournament. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, guys, one reason, like, like Frederick is so hard, we had a great podcast episode that just yeah. dropped last week talk, that talked about this. There are now blueback herring in there. And this is my hypothesis is when you have blueback herring and you don't have a lot of shore structure, the – the lake really resembles some of those South Carolina blueback lakes where it's like there's nothing but brush. It's clear. And then you have this pelagic bait. And so those fish do not really relate as much to the to the cover on the shore. And they're just chasing bait. And so sadly, I think guys that have the pan optics, it's going to it's going to favor them because oh, it, yeah. it'll turn on real quick. Um, when you fish blueback lakes and they push up to the surface, you can catch 20 pounds you know, or, or 100 inches if you're a kayak guy real quick and then when they go back down that bite's done yeah and so i think it's going to be a lot of flurries and things when like that. when they come up though that's going to be like the key yeah. moment of the tournament and you're going to see guys in kayaks boom, it's going to zoom you're going to yeah. surround that school man it's, like it's that's going to be the only way to to really make i think the tournament change really is what they're going to end up doing are they going to rise at all because i was out there the other day and I didn't see any schooling fish. Really? Whatsoever. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I was out there for like a solid four hours and I, maybe I was just on the wrong end of the lake. I went to the left. I normally go right. Um, I've always had more luck on that lake going to the right for some reason than going to the left, but mm. I didn't see any schooling fish at all. And I didn't have my electronics with me either. So it wasn't like I was going to find them. Um, I wonder if it's because like the temperature just, cause we literally just got hit with this cold snap too. Yeah. So I wonder if that's going to really adjust the way they're going to behave. Too. I think it could definitely, mm -hmm. it'll be, it'll definitely be an interesting tournament. It, it will be. And then guys, we're going to try to cover it to the best of our ability. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, anything we haven't covered yet? Uh, oh, guys, again, link in the description to Northern Virginia Kayak Association great club uh their championship is going to be held at lake frederick next weekend october 1st so if you want to come out to jake's bait and tackle we're going to probably have a meet and greet afterwards if you want to go to lake frederick and just watch them it's so cool because the lake is not like the res where it's you can see a lot of the lake from the dam and mm -hmm. from the dock so you could come and actually watch a lot of the guys compete yeah so it's kind of interesting from like a a, a person that wants to watch that you might be able to do that um, but yeah, sir, thank you so much for coming on the show. I thank really appreciate much. it guys. We're going to take a quick, uh, two minute break. Uh, so I can take, all righty, everybody. So we are back here at Jake's bait and tackle. We are doing the 10 year anniversary of Jake's. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming here all day long. Please stop on by. If you want to say hi, if you got some questions to ask, we have vendors here, we have food, we have everything we're, and we're going to have guests all day. And right now, um, we have a we have a really really cool guest, a really cool individual. We're gonna bring him on the show right now. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the public? Uh, my name is Adam Packham. I am the founder and president of Heroes on the River. Uh, we are a 501c3, 100% uh, nonprofit organization that hosts outdoor adventures for combat veterans. That's awesome. How long have you been doing this for? Uh, we established the organization in 2016. My wife and I. Oh, awesome. What uh, what got you into fishing? Uh, well, I've just been around it my whole life. And, uh, and, and you know, outdoor adventure, uh, you know, it, a big part of outdoor adventure in this country is fishing, you know. And I knew, I knew that uh, uh, having fishing involved in the organization would definitely attract a lot of uh, veterans. And uh, my dad, my whole family history is military. I've been, grew up fishing with my dad. So uh, it's just been a part of my life. And just wanted to pass that on to as part of what we do. Now, where are the tournaments are usually held? Uh, well, we've only really done one tournament so far, and it was back in 2019. Uh, it was on the Shenandoah River, and that was uh, out of Front Royal there at the Front Royal Country Club, which is the same location we're having our, our event next weekend. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, how many boats are you guys thinking that you're going to be having? Uh, this year, we are, I think, at... Somewhere around 12 or 13 right now, uh, captains. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Is that really the number that you're expecting or are you expecting different numbers? Uh, what would you hope for? Perfect world. Well, it really depends. Uh, what is meant as long as we have captains and, uh, veterans, uh, to pair up, uh, we'll take as many as want to come. I mean, up to 25 is where we're kind of at right now with all the stuff that we're giving away to our veterans for this event. Uh, so right now we're at about 13 and we can, uh, accommodate as much as 25 boats and tw uh, 25 captains and 25, uh, combat veterans. That's really crazy. And then guys, you know, this is a really good cause. If this is something that you're interested in, you know, I'm going to leave a link down below about where you can get in touch, but, uh, for people that are, they're watching at home, how can they get in contact with you? 
All right. Well, we just launched our website uh, a couple of months ago. It's heroesontheriver.org. That's H E R O E S on the river.org. We also have a Facebook page at Heroes on the River. Um, they can also reach out to us at info at heroesontheriver.org. Uh, and that's again H E R O E S. Uh, and we also have a contact number, 540-931-8015. Awesome. Dude, that's that's really awesome. And again, it's a great cause. Um, if you'd like to come on down, see him. He's set up here at Jake's Bain Tackle. He's going to be here all day. I'll be here all day, too. Um, yeah, I mean, sir, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me, sir. Yeah, have a absolutely. great day. You, too. And there you have it, everybody. Um, we're going to have multiple guests on throughout the day. We're going to keep it going. So joining us now... Why don't you just introduce yourself? We can get going here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Daniel Charles. I'm the owner of Bent Rod Fishing uh, based here in Winchester, Virginia. Uh, specialized mainly in like hard plastic um, painting, uh, airbrushing hard plastic lures. We have just started getting into some plastics. Um, and I very recently just learned how to make spinnerbaits. Oh, awesome. Um, they're not for sale yet because I want to make sure they're I'm doing it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but once, I, once I'm confident in them, then they'll be... We'll be producing those as well, um, custom painted. You know, I'm getting them all unpainted and painting them up myself. So. Good deal, good deal. So what got you guys into this? Ooh, um, honestly, I approached my brother um, at the end of 2019. A friend of mine had told me about people having like little side hustles on Amazon, and I thought it sounded fun. So mm -hmm. I reached out to my brother. I said, hey, do you want to do this together? You know, a couple hundred bucks a piece, you know, we'll invest. And it was, you know, I hate to say it, <laughs> Uh, buying from China, right? And mm. just having them shipped straight to Amazon warehouses. Um, and we were doing these little, I actually have some, I should have one of my sons bring one over here. Um, these little like six seg segmented swim baits, but they're little, they look like bluegill, crappie, shad, whatnot. Um, they're deadly. Um, but Amazon just picks you apart. Like you can't make any money. I mean, you can, but we weren't. Mm -hmm. um, and then COVID hit um, and my job that I had ended and Ooh. I was kind of in a little bit of a like panic pattern for a couple of weeks. And then it just hit me. I was laying in bed one night and I thought, you know what? I started this side hustle. It doesn't have to be a side hustle. Mm -hmm. We can change this and make it what I do. I've, I've always been artistically inclined. I love fishing. I've been fishing since my dad could get me to hold a fishing pole. So I just kind of was like, this makes sense. And I started looking at what we could do that was not just ordering from china and reselling at a higher price um and i ran across a guy on youtube uh baker builds i think is his uh youtube channel and he was airbrushing um a, a square bill and just watching him do it go, watching it go from a clear plastic to something that was awesome and he did it with household like a shower loofah he would cut the end the a piece so of it off and wrap cool. it around and that was his scaling and just all the different stuff and it was airbrushing which kind of spoke to me and so i asked my brother what he thought and he was a fan so we both um bought cheap amazon uh, airbrushing kits just to test it out and started painting some lures just to use ourselves and fell in love with it um when you when you started this like where are you hoping that this will go between now because it's really interesting with like mm -hmm. look like local bake manufacturers and, and the reason i bring this up guys and this will this will tie into some things um a, a national bait manufacturer you think about patterns and, and colors and stuff that will work probably not like perfect everywhere but pr pretty decent mm -hmm. on a bunch of bodies of water mm -hmm. the nice thing about being local is you can really specifically target mm -hmm. a niche so when you're looking at, at evolving and growing, is that something that's in the back of your head that are you going to be making baits that are, are more of a national appeal or like, hey, I want the perfect Potomac River bait? Right. And, and like, how, how does that all work? Um, yes. <laughs> that's the easiest way. Yeah. I, I mean, I have a website. Um, most of our sales come from the website and it's nationwide. Right. So I do want to appeal to the masses as much as I can. I, I need to do that in order to survive. This is what I do full time now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I can't afford to just be like Shenandoah Valley, but I do focus on that a lot. Um, in fact, this lure right here is called the seven bins um, oh, cool. because I designed it with the Shenandoah River in mind. Um, right, guys, I'll just hold this up. Little, Since this oh, camera right here actually has that the ID attachment there. All right, there you go. Little holographic um, silent red crawl pattern um that's really uh, cool it's deadly 
I mean, you go to the Shenandoah trying to catch a smallmouth, you will not be disappointed with that. Um, check. Audio muted. How how is our? Yeah, how's our uh, how's our audio sounding right now? Can you hear me? Okay. Testing one, two, three. Did she say something right now? Oh, uh, yeah. And you, you keep, you keep, I, uh, I think our audio is good now. You keep talking. Okay. Um, so yes, uh, I do want to focus on local waters and honestly, I know some fishermen here in the area that are amazing, right? I, I will not ever try to convince somebody that I'm a great fisherman. I'm a, I'm a good artist, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I'm not the best fisherman in the world. So what I have done is I've, found four or five guys here locally that they fish a lot of tournaments they're like i've gone fishing with them and basically stood there going oh yeah i'm nowhere near is like these guys have got it figured <laughs> out and so they have agreed they i mean i guess you could call them pro staffers that it's not really official i just paint them up and i'll send pictures out hey what do you think of this and if they like it i'll send them two or three of them and say hey let me know and then they're fishing on the shenandoah and the potomac and lake mm. frederick and like holiday um my brother has a boat and lives in Lake Holiday, so we do a lot of our testing in Lake Holiday, um, which is tough. Lake Holiday, it's it's tough. It's really tough. It's a it's tough, really tough, tough lake to fish. Um, but we know if we go out there and we have a good day, it's a good bait. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so uh, that's mainly what what I do for my hands on is mainly either Lake Frederick or Lake Holiday. Now I am buying a kayak um, this fall. My wife and I are actually both going to buy kayaks, and then she's going to join. Um, and we're going to like on my YouTube channel and we're going to start doing like fishing series where oh, cool. it's kind of like a combo. Like I will only use the stuff that I make and we'll make sure, you know, Hey, this is the seven rivers or, you know, this is the ghost of darkness, yada, yada, but we're going to be going everywhere. Shenandoah, Potomac, deep Creek, you know, like Anna anywhere, right. We're just going to go everywhere with our kayaks and then kind of try that, to build the YouTube channel up with doing that as well. Right now, my YouTube channel is almost exclusively like how to like, painting tutorials like mm -hmm. this is how i painted this lure i take you from step one all the way to the end um but i want to mix it up a little bit and have some variety on my channel so we're gonna this fall we'll start doing fishing videos so people are going to see firsthand exactly how not great of a fisherman i am but we hope that it's funny <laughs> don't expect to tune in to learn how to fish but expect to tune in to laugh hopefully um and then maybe learn about the baits that we have available that's the no, plan that, that's freaking awesome and then guys again so if you're in the winchester area we are at jake's bait and tackle we are celebrating mm -hmm. their 10-year anniversary we're going to be here all day i'm going to be live streaming until 4 or 5 p.m tonight uh i will also be posting the schedule of people that we're going to be having on the show but don't worry this is going to be chopped up and actually put as a podcast episode as well um like let's show off some more baits that yeah here. well i just started doing soft plastics that is a five inch um core shot cinco i fell in love with that as soon as it came out of the mold uh yeah translucent blue with blue flake and then a black core shot to kind of set it off it those are pretty nice this is one of our best sellers actually right now ghost of darkness just a black whopper plopper i mean it, it's it's hard to beat <laughs> I love the scales right there. Actually. Yeah. I actually, um, I can't take credit. Do you know Marty Lawson? Yes. Okay. Marty. He's coming on the show today. Is he? Oh, yeah. he's going to be here? That's yeah. awesome. I love Marty. Um, Marty called me one day and he said, hey, I don't know if you know this, but loon whopper ploppers are out. Every, you can't find them. He was like, I'm sure they'll be back in, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, but right now, like you go to every, like they're just they're blown up and you can't find them anywhere. You should paint some. I was like, you are right. <laughs> yeah. So I started looking for like the loon, like stencils and whatnot to do it. And the, I, I couldn't find any, but then I realized that doesn't matter. Like the bass aren't eating that because they think it's a loon. They're eating it because it's a black whopper plopper. That's what it's mm -hmm. doing it. So then I just painted something up and tried to make it look cool. <laughs> but that was my attempt at something that was similar to a loon whopper plopper. And that my son, who he's my biggest bait tester if you will <laughs> he's all about it he catches most of his bass on this it's been i mean it's it's been a great lure for us what do you what, what and again guys for the for the new people that are watching because we're like we're right over we we just hit like 30 people watching and it dropped back down a little bit now again please please like and promote this this uh live stream i want to try to get up to 100 people today if possible that would be really cool um 
what are some more products that you're like, where do you want to go with this? Like how many products that you're going to offer? Are, are you going to just stick with crankbaits and plugs or like certain types of crankbaits or, or where do you see it? Um, I'm always looking for something new. Um, one of my favorite baits to paint right now, I actually didn't bring any. Um, it's a JDM Lux Avenger. It's Ooh. a Gamakatsu makes them. Okay. It's like a whopper plopper. It's a little smaller, but it has a double blade on the back. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, and I, I bought a couple um, uh, from Alternative Lures. Um, they, they're one of my big suppliers. They, I love, they're, they're a little bit more expensive with the blanks, but they're super high quality. Mm -hmm. Like they've got the best quality blanks I've found yet, honestly. Um, and they have them and they're very hard to find. Those blanks are very difficult to find. And I'm, so I bought a lot of them now, um, but man, they're honestly, I think they're better than, than just this typical Whopper Plopper. Uh, they're really good. So they'll, they will be right now. I have one on the website, the steel trap is what it's called. If anybody wants to look it up, bentrodfishingusa.com, you can look it up steel trap. Um, it's the, and these are the real, they're not knockoffs. That's why I bought as many of them as I did. And you go to all turn like right there on it. They're like, these are from Japan. These are the real mm -hmm. Gamakatsu blanks. So I bought as many as I could afford to buy at the time. Um, but so I'm always looking for something new. Um, I'm breaking out into soft plastics. The, I've got, um, a crawl mold that we've used a lot and I have a bloodline swim bait mold that I haven't really done much with yet. Um, but it's a very labor intensive, mm -hmm. uh, mold to, to use. Um, but yeah, I'm doing that. And I plan on getting into saltwater. Um, in fact, probably shouldn't say this, uh, but probably in about 10 years, I'll probably be a hundred percent saltwater. Why? Um, because I'm moving. Oh, okay. Oh, that, that does it guys. <laughs> I'm moving. Um, and where we're moving, it's, we're going to be in the Pacific ocean, basically. I mean, it's not going to make any sense for me not to do that. And I'm buying a boat and I'm starting a charter and like, I've got a whole, this bent rod fishing is step one of my COVID's not going to beat me plan. Mm -hmm. Basically my career was ended when, co when quarantine hit, it, we lasted about two months yeah. and then it was over. Our office shut down and I was like, what are we going to do? So I have a plan and this, this, that's what this is. I need to get bent rod to where I need to get it. I need to get my YouTube channel to where I, you know, certain place. And then we're moving, um, to Panama actually. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Pettacy, Panama. Um, I just, one of the videos on my YouTube channel is me and, and my son, Christian, uh, fishing two charters out there, catching Mahi and Amberjack so and cool. tuna. I mean, it's awesome. That is awesome. It's really awesome. I, saltwater has always called me more like i've always been a freshwater fisherman um because i've never lived close enough to the ocean for it to be a regular thing for me but anytime i go anywhere where there's saltwater i'm always looking somebody up chartering a boat like i'm i love saltwater fishing like i like bass fishing don't get me wrong but saltwater you never know when you cast that lure in there what i mean you might know what you're targeting but you don't know what you're going to pull out i mean mm -hmm. that's kind of true in freshwater but look if you tell me go catch a smallmouth I will go catch a smallmouth, right? Period. I know where to go, catch smallmouth. Go catch a crappie. I can go catch a crappie. But you go to the ocean and catch this, you can try. But, <laughs> you know, you, and that to me is awesome. I love not knowing 100% what I'm about to catch. Just the the mystery of it just yeah, gets yeah. There, me. The mystery there, the danger of it. Like mm -hmm. there's something about being on, on the ocean or the bay or, or, or wherever you guys go on that there is that element of, of danger, which is like the adventurous part of it. And you don't know what you're going to catch. You can, you know, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I always tell this, this story guys on like my other channel spirits and ghost stories. When we did the shark episode that only time I went surfing, I got bumped the back of the board, got bumped by, by a five and a half foot bull shark. I was in six, seven feet of water <laughs> and what scared like scared me but like is the fact that it was a really shallow water for a creature that big mm -hmm. and you just i didn't know he was there until i looked back and the board just just moved a little bit and that's what's so also cool about the fishing side of it is it, you don't know what's down there because that that water can hold so many cool things yep. um and terrifying things too yeah <laughs> um now one thing i wanted to ask you is i was talking to marty about this have you ever thought about getting into the swim bait game because you want to talk about where the where there's a lot of money is custom guys that spends like six grand on one bait. Yeah. Like that that's the market. Yes. Uh I have. In fact, Jenny here at Jake's pointed out to me there's a guy semi local. I don't remember exactly where I think she said he's either out of Maryland or Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. um, who makes swim baits. And she said when he shows up to an event, uh, there's like two hundred people in line. 
for him, not mm-hmm. for the event, just for him. And he has started making his swim baits because he's more woodworking. Like I've seen the ones that he paints and I'm not going to, I don't remember his name, but I certainly wouldn't say it because I'm about to kind of critique. And obviously he's been doing this for 30 years and how dare I, but his, his paint is obviously not where his talent is. His talent is in the bait making. And she said, I guess somebody must have mentioned that to him. So now he sells his swim baits. They're like 70 bucks a piece, but they're unpainted. And she was, when I came in here one time, she pulled me aside. She said, you need to start painting these yeah. because your paint with his woodworking, that's a really good combination. So I just can't afford to drop $70 on one lure right now. But once we get to the point, I do plan on looking into that a little bit more. I'm actually going to reach out to the guy and say, Hey, do you want to collaborate? And mm-hmm. hopefully he will. I don't know, but, um, and actually looking to collaborate with a couple of people. I found, um, these guys, uh, Shenandoah. Shenandoah Valley Bass Brothers, I think is what yes, they're called. Yes, yes. Um, and I, I found them, reached out to them because I saw Shenandoah Valley. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And mm-hmm. I kind of reached out to them. And really, I haven't met them in person yet, but just on Instagram, really nice guys. Like, they're like, oh, absolutely. You know, come fish with us. You can be on the video or just send us baits and we'll, you know, do your baits. I think they're actually, mm, I don't know if that's public knowledge. I'm not about to blow up their spot yet. He told me something I'm really excited about for them, but I'm not going to be the one to announce that on their behalf. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll back that up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm about to collaborate with them uh, on some baits. Um, and that is like what you were talking about, more specific. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to get with them and like, what do you guys like to throw? What's, what's mo- you know, on the North Fork? Like what what's your go-to? And, ha- and have them kind of work with me on designing some patterns for the North Fork and then kind of present it as, you know, Bent Rod and the Shenandoah Valley Bass Brothers came together and they got this to, you know, to really nail down the Shenandoah. And I've got some guys on the Potomac that are kind of doing the same thing. So I, I do want to focus locally, not to circle back on an l- earlier topic, but. Oh, that's that's fine. Um, I mean, it's a radio show. So yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're definitely, pe- people always ask me like, hey, you repeat your topics. Like, yeah, but if you're doing like a show like this, especially the live stream, like you're not gonna have the same people. So like yeah. in 20, 30 minutes, it's it's a new set of people asking questions. And so you either blow them off or you gotta repeat yourself. Yeah, that's that right. happens a lot. <laughs> that's right. And, and speaking of repetitiveness, a tie-in, yeah, you want to plug, uh, please, please plug your business again. Like where can people find yeah. you and reach out? Um, so our website is bentrodfishingusa.com. Um, and I'm all over Facebook, Instagram. You can find me on there. I have a YouTube channel, Bent Rod Fishing. Um, I'm, that's a huge goal of mine. I'm, I, as you know, um, growing a YouTube channel mm-hmm. is not easy it's at not, all. It's, really it's very difficult. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've been spending a lot of time doing that. Actually, I've neglected it for about the last two weeks because I had a huge order come in from Heroes on the River and it took me almost two weeks to finish painting wow. that for them. So hmm. um, I haven't put any videos out because it was kind of go, go, go time. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're they're coming, right? I mean, uh, the, the painting videos will continue. The fishing videos are coming. But yeah, that um, YouTube is a big thing. I'm really trying to grow. I'm trying to focus on that a lot. That's something I can do from anywhere. And, Honestly, I want to get it as big as I can here because saltwater fishing on YouTube, like it's huge, 10 times bigger than freshwater. Like mm-hmm. when it comes to the audience and just yeah, what, I mean, it, it has a bigger footprint. It has it a does. bigger impact. Um, so I, that's, I want to get it as big here as I can so that when we get to Panama and I start doing, I've already got a some base to start going with. And that's when I really expect for it to probably grow faster because of just what i'm doing yeah um but yeah that's that's the plan dude good deal again guys please you know like and subscribe to his youtube channel Mm -hmm. go check out some of his baits and then if there's anybody else that that that's actually at this show that you want me to have back on i'm going to have time today to bring people back on there's something that you want me to talk about a specific bait something like that we have a lot of cool vendors here we have a flea market going on and we have a a a live guest that'll be starting here in a real short time uh we're gonna have another little five minute commercial break guys uh, to bring on the next guest so please stay with us sir thank you so much for coming thank on you. i appreciate it thank you for having me you're listening to fishing the dmv with your hosts thomas aarons and jared mounts fishing the dmv is brought to you by jake's bait and tackle located in winchester virginia if that doesn't get you jacked up i don't know what will